Hi guys, um, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you some of my tips, like the most important tips I can think of um, to help you progress instantly, I would say, in climbing. Um, I'm gonna try to make this like a little series, just like here and there, give you some cool videos on exercises that I do and things, little things that can help you progress. So this is the first one, starting off with like my four basic tips. Before we get started, here are four tips on how to protect your privacy online and internet connection. My first tip is to do some research on NordVPN. What is NordVPN? A VPN is a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. Cool. My second tip is to check out their features because with NordVPN you get more than just a VPN. You get threat protection that stops malware, web trackers, ads, and other internet threats. But you also get a dark web monitor that gives you instant alerts if any of your accounts are compromised. And you can put in place a dedicated IP which gives you secure access to business servers and allows you to access your favorite websites without any worries of getting blocked and so much more. My third tip is to then check their offers and use my link to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four extra months and an extra gift for free. It's completely risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. My last and final tip is to download NordVPN on all of your devices because you know there's nothing better. So tip number one, which is the most basic and you probably already know it, but it's footwork. Um, footwork is really the most important, I would say. Um, start off really basic is to always climb with the tips of your shoes not only are you going to be more precise but it's also the strongest part in the shoe and at the same time it allows you to like pivot from side to side of the foot depending on which side of the shoe you would like to use also being able to change feet if your tip is on you have a lot more space to just like hop and give space to the other foot compared to if you're climbing with the side of the shoe, it's much more difficult. I was just trying to show you like how to not climb. It's actually so much harder. Like I'm not, like I'm exaggerating of course, but yeah, climbing with a tip, much better. So not only is footwork important for everything I just said before, but also if you are able to like place your feet precisely, correctly on holds and trust your feet, you're gonna take off so much weight off your arms and you're just gonna be able to climb, I would say a lot harder um, because when people start climbing, they think it's all about like just pulling and holding as hard as you can and pulling as hard as you can. But really if you place your feet properly, you can take off so much weight and of course it helps a lot if you can't hold smaller holds. One exercise that you can kind of like play with to work on foot position is trying to not make any noise when placing your feet on the wall. It seems and sounds easy but it's actually much harder than you think because you really need to position your body properly to be able to move your feet slowly and place it slowly on the wall and that really kind of forces you to think about body positioning and how you want to place both of your feet. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> so I slipped, but that's more or less the concept, like placing your feet properly and really focusing on footwork and not making any noise. Now also for footwork, there's a difference between small feet and volumes. Um, so as I said before, small feet, you're gonna mainly have the tip on and you're gonna wanna push against the foothold so your heel's gonna head up a bit. Volumes, you're gonna wanna do the opposite. You wanna try to get your heel as low as possible so then you have as much um, of the shoe on the volume, um, which is, it demands a lot of ankle flexibility and it's quite hard to do, but something to think of when you're trying volumey boulders. When you're in an overhang, if you struggle to keep like your feet on the wall, the idea is to kind of like, as if your toes want to like grab, <laughs> grab the hold. So you're gonna really, so your shoe's gonna be like this, it's a bit slanted, and then you kind of want to like grab the hold with your toes. In French, it's griffé. I have no idea if there's a word for that in 
English terms probably, but I just don't know it. So last thing about footwork, which is gonna help me transition to my second tip, but is heel hooks. And what's important to keep in mind with heel hooks is that you're gonna have, of course, the foot on the heel, the shoe, the, oh my God, the hold on the heel part of the shoe. And you're gonna wanna bring your toes as low as possible. So then all like your um, hamstrings and um, calves are gonna be like working and pulling to bring you closer to the wall and closer to your heel. And yeah, so you just wanna bring the toes down. <laughs> so typically here, if I just place my heel like this and try to pull, it's, I mean, you'll be able to pull, but it's not gonna feel as strong as if you bring your tips down as low as possible and move onto your foot. Okay, so all of this brings me to my second tip, which is hip placement and then center of gravity. I feel like hips is something we kind of forget about because we only really use our feet and hands that are touching the wall, but hips have a lot to play in your climbing. And typically here for the heel hooks, the toes go down, which really allows you to bring your hips over to your foot. And that is really just all about like placing yourself to release um, weight off once again, your arms. Also, everything with slabs and coordination, I'll show you examples um, after. Everything kind of starts with the hips. So typically with coordination, if you're trying to start a swing, think about your hips pushing you forward. Um, on a slab, if you want to get close to the wall, it's really your hips pushing you into the wall. With the hips, there's so much to talk about, but you kind of just want to think of where like your center of gravity is. It's the hips, and wherever your hips are, that's really gonna take off um, weight from your hands. Okay, so typically here, I'm gonna try to move as far left as possible, but also bring my hips out as far, and then bring your hips as close to the wall, which, Helps big time. Hips close to the wall. One exercise that I really enjoy doing is, or giving, is um, you have to climb. Position yourself in a stable position. So thinking of your feet, hips, hands, and then be able to let go of the hand and then do the move. And then typically, same again, you position yourself, you're, you're able to take one hand off, do the move. And that forces you to kind of think of where your feet are, where your hips are, and how you want to be. <laughs> Typically, I'm going to do this move, and then I'm going to position myself to be able to let go of this hand. And then you can grab the hold again, position yourself again to do the next move. Position yourself in a way that allows you to let go of the next hand, and where you don't have like a huge amount of swing. You can take the next hold again, do the next move, and then once again, place yourself, let go of the hand. And that kind of that kind of really forces you to think about um, how you want to position your feet and your hips. I'll give you an example of like an exaggerated example of if your body is badly positioned. This position here, look how my hips are gonna move me away from the wall. I'm just gonna try to let go of my right hand and I'm just gonna swing open. Because my hips, my center of gravity, wants to be to the left, but my whole body, my whole body is to the right, which means I'm just gonna swing open. See what I mean? All of this brings me to my third tip, which is what to do with your arms. Typically, to save as much energy as possible, you're gonna wanna climb arm straight and your foot placement, hip placement, is what's gonna help you to do that. Um, Cause we can do a little test, having your arms straight and trying to climb with body positioning or having your arms at 90 and trying to just move all the time with that. Huge difference, I'll give you an example. Okay, so typically what not to do <laughs> is like this all the time. You're like locking off. Okay, I typically have the strength to be able to lock off, but it's so much harder. Like if you ask me to stay as long as possible, like this or like this is gonna change so much. One important thing, even if you do have your arms straight, it's important to think that your shoulders are always engaged. Um, you don't wanna be like this all the time. You wanna really 
bring your shoulders down and have them engaged because that also changes a lot. Not engaged, engaged. Not engaged, engaged. But there are of course moments where you're not gonna wanna have your arms straight and you wanna be higher up, typically for like jumps, coordination. Um, if your arms are bent, you'll have so much less swing to take than if your arms are straight, like you have so much more space and room for movement. Okay, so I'm gonna try to show you what this move looks like if I land arms straight. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> That went really bad. And my last and final tip, which isn't really anything to do with technique, but is also very helpful, is breathing. Like, just don't forget to breathe. And I'm gonna kind of give you an example of how you could do it typically in a hard move where you won't be able to breathe. Every move, big deep breath in, hold my breath, do the hard move, and then a big breathe out. And that also kind of like prepares you mentally to get into a hard um, move and like, you know, pull, pull and try hard. So typically that border, I kind of did everything that I talked to you guys about today. I started with my arms straight, my feet to be able to match both. I really had to focus on like, pushing my feet against the wall and like curling my toes so then it stays on. I move straight once I got to the jump, focused on getting high and pulling up so then I don't have as much swing. And then moved up afterwards, placed my heel hook, put my toes down, was able to move my hips onto my feet. Um, and then typically the end, it was just focusing on having straight arms, feet were to the right so my hips were underneath me so then I didn't have as much like movement and then end. Okay, and that's it for this video. I hope these tips were useful and helpful. Um, definitely let me know in the comments if you feel any difference and if there's anything else you would like to know. <laughs> but for me, those are more or less the most important tips I could think of. If I think of more, well, that will be in another video. So that's it for today.